Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to yet another Zoom call on a gorgeous summer evening. I know you probably have lots of other fun, maybe outdoor activities to do, so I'm really honored that you're here. Um, tonight's presentation is called How to Homeschool Your Kids, and I'm Dr. P. Dominique Paterano, the president and founder of Crimson Coaching. Oh. Oops, sorry about that. So who am I? Um, I was a high school teacher for many years and decided to launch Crimson Coaching, uh, an academic tutoring test prep and college counseling service, Crimson, because um, my undergraduate degree is, is from Harvard and Crimson is the color associated with Harvard. Um, I developed this talk primarily because Emily asked me, but also because I know that homeschooling and distance learning are on everybody's minds right now. And I wanted to just give some sort of basic facts and considerations for parents from a teacher's point of view, some things that you may want to think about if you're thinking about homeschooling your child or children. So tonight's agenda as it is, is I'll be giving this PowerPoint presentation in webinar format um, for about say 20, 25 minutes or so. You can absolutely feel free to jump in, ask a question um, if you'd like, or you can save them until the end. Um, best practices for Zoom, I'm sure everybody knows by now, but if you could mute yourself, that would be really helpful because the background noise um, sometimes is really distracting. And before we go on any further, I just want to once again give three big thank yous. You to being here, Emily Dowie, the young adult librarian goddess from Pearl River Public Library for organizing this and for always looking out for her students and families' needs, and the Pearl River Public Library itself for sponsoring this talk tonight. So, the first thing I'd like you all to know is that you, if you are thinking about homeschooling your child, you are not alone. Before we go any further, I'd like to just provide a definition for what a homeschooled child is. So um, just yet, literally yesterday, the New York Times, um, I encourage you to go online and look at this article if you're thinking of homeschooling your child. Jessica Grose, G-R-O-S-E, is the parenting editor of the Times. And um, she defines it according to, I believe it's the National Center on Education Statistics. Home, a student is homeschooled if they're in a traditional school setting less than 25 hours a week, if they are not being homeschooled because of a temporary illness, or if their parents say they're homeschooled. So that's what a homeschooled child is. About almost 1.7 million American children are homeschooled, and we'll get into the different reasons that that might be in a moment. Um, and as you might imagine the National Homeschool Association has recorded that um, inquiries from parents about homeschooling have exploded since March. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get, I'm not sure why there is this little, yeah, I can't get that little um, uh, black mark are off there. But anyway, um, some questions you might want to consider if you're thinking of homeschooling. I think the first one that's most crucial is um, how do your children learn best if you're thinking of homeschooling? Um, because that should really guide 
ha the lesson, the type of lessons that you develop for your child. So for example, you know, if your child is a kinesthetic learner and many young children are, you're going to need to think about getting them up out of their seats a lot. If they're a visual learner, you're going to want to have nice visuals. If they learn more through hearing or music, you can think about gearing your lessons towards that. Obviously, with, with so many people still working from home, you wanna consider how will homeschooling fit into your work life? Is all day education something that your family can adopt and there's no shame um, if, if that's not. So these are, these are the, the last two considerations are usually some more of the kind of, you know, downers I think about homeschooling, but I want to just share with you another one <clears throat> is that, you know, many students can actually flourish and blossom while being taught from home. Um, students, for example, who have experienced bullying at school, Students who are bored at school can sometimes become a behavior issue and <clears throat> really start to disrupt classes. And so, you know, you can, the, the benefit obviously to homeschooling is that you, if you notice your child has caught on like that, if you've got a really bright kid, you can kind of take him or her as quickly as they master the material. So there are definitely some benefits to it as well, despite the challenges. So you might want to consider some of your options. Many people in the past have homeschooled their children because of religious issues. They wanted to integrate more religion into the child's curriculum. And there are, are a whole host of um, uh, organizations and curricula that are designed for parents who want to do that. That, I would say, has often been among the primary drivers of the homeschooling movement up until COVID um, in the United States up, up until now. Um, you can go completely online. For example, Stanford has a completely online high school curriculum or you can design your own lessons and supplement them perhaps with online lessons. Um, for example, many of the lessons on Khan Academy I think are great, especially if um, you're a parent like, like, you know, many parents, it's been a while since you've taken algebra or geometry or trigonometry, maybe you never took them. And I think that Khan Academy's lessons are really pretty, pretty good in, in this respect. Uh, and so you can supplement from online options as well. So you don't necessarily have to invent everything. Most importantly, I think if and when you're designing the majority or even some of your child's lessons is letting your child's passion dictate where you go. So I, I'm a huge fan for people who are homeschooling of project-based learning, which can often be very interdisciplinary. So for example, when I was a very young teacher, I did uh, in, an interdisciplinary unit for um, a grades K through three uh, gifted program that I taught um, on the weekends. And we, it, the, the, the unit was called All Roads Lead to Rome. And the kids learned some sonnets, so they had writing, um, they also um, learned art and uh, believe it or not, I, sh I saved eggshells for months before I taught this course because the kids learned um, how to make a mosaic. And so, you know, there was a big long mosaic and we painted different eggshells, different colors, and then they made a mosaic. We also integrated PE. Um, I made little sort of Chari Roman chariots out of boxes and so they got to run around and then they also learned um, math and science um, and, and looking at arches and things like that that the, that the Romans built and of course obviously history um, that was kind of the the overarching concept of this ancient Rome lesson so 
Um, that's the um, idea of integrating many different kinds of subjects into um, uh, a sort of a unit. And the benefit of this is that students learn how to make connections, draw connections among disciplines. That's what adults do all the time in our work life. And oftentimes the sort of strict boundaries between ELA and math, if we're never really integrating them, I think we're doing kids a disservice. Um, Project-based learning is similar, but it kind of mm, sort of brings it up a notch. So you would design the entire lesson around a sort of project or um, a, a goal. So for example, another course I took, um, we uh, kind of reenacted the trial of Galileo. And so this was kind of like a, a, a much more narrow focus and we got to get into the astronomy of it. This was a gifted class for kids grades four through six. Um, so we got into the math and astronomy of it, the history of it, as well as the theatrical aspect of, of this trial. And so <clears throat> um, these can both really, especially if you have m multiple kids around the same age, this can be wonderful. I would suggest, um, and we'll talk about pods in a second, homeschooling pods, you could also do this um, virtually as well with other kids who are being homeschooled. Um, but whatever your child's passion is, whether it's astronomy or ancient Rome, um, I think you should all, you, you, this is a great time to get children on board to be responsible for and accountable for their own learning. And I think that one of the greatest ways to do that is really to make sure that you construct with your child beforehand the benchmarks that he or she will have to hit throughout this lesson, right? And so you don't want to be, I mean, the kind of downside of regular school is that, you know, when there's say 25 kids in a class, oftentimes the teacher can't really do this. And so it's teacher mandated benchmarks and teacher mandated sort of what, what you have to do when. But if you're doing this alone with, with your child, you can really, I think it's a great opportunity to show them how they can be responsible for that. And I would like to think hopefully, even if say they're only in fifth grade, that, that then that will pay off dividends, even if you stop homeschooling after COVID is over so that they then become much more um, accountable for their work as they go into middle school and high school. So when you homeschool uh, children in, in any state, uh, the state will have requirements about that. Um, education by the Constitution is it's not a federal function. Um, it is uh, mandated. Each state has its own requirements. And so New York State has some requirements. The first one being you need to actually file a notice of intent with your school district superintendent within 14 days of beginning your homeschooling, whether that's at the beginning of the year or whether it's say, you know, October 13th, whatever it is, as well as every year thereafter, if you wind up continuing. You also need to then provide an instructional plan. So this is the plan that you and perhaps your child will, will construct of what you plan to do and cover as well as quarterly reports. So this is, would sort of be like the child's report card, but now you need to do this on what the child has actually learned during the previous quarter. And at the end of the year, provide an annual assessment to the superintendent of what your child has learned. In terms of amount of time, you'll also need to be sure that you're you know, keeping close logs. For students in grades one through six, they are required to have 900 hours of instruction in a year. Students grade through seven through 12 need 990 hours of instruction throughout the year. And 
if you um, are thinking of it, I, of homeschooling your child, I strongly recommend that you copy down this website. I'll stay on it for a moment so you can do so. It's www.p12.nyse.gov slash or backslash rather s s s backslash home instruction backslash so um this is the the main sort of home page of the state's requirements for people who are planning on homeschooling so you really want to maintain compliance with that by making sure you go there okay um, and if you are visiting us from a state that's not New York, I'm sure your state has, has a similar uh, website as well. So my one caveat about homeschooling is if your child is in um, 11th or 12th grade, maybe even 9th or 10th, is that you really want to make sure, so basically if your child's in high school, you really want to make sure what are the implications of homeschooling your child on their college admissions chances later on. Um, to have the best chance of acceptance to a selective university, it's recommended that you enroll in an accredited program. For example, there's Keystone School, there's University of Texas of Austin High School. Um, you know, they are sort of tried and true. Their, their um, program, their curriculum has already been accredited by an outside agency. And so if you're worried about the impact, um, and I'm just wondering, Pugliese, um, if yes. you could mute yourself, that would be great. Um, you were currently not muted. Thank you. Um, and um, in addition, if you're worried about the impact of um, uh, homeschooling on college admissions, have your child take AP and or SAT2, which are also called subject tests, so that they can prove their mastery of certain content and skills, for example, like writing skills. Um, that's sort of like a universal benchmark that will help them um, prove that. You know, in New York State, um, we have the regents and generally that's what the regents are intended to do. But of course, last year the regents were canceled. The APs actually went, still happened. So even though the APs were dramatically changed in form, at least students who were homeschooled could still demonstrate their mastery of whatever subject they were taking that test in. So practically speaking, what kind of sort of person or what, what um, practices do you need to do in order to successfully homeschool your child? I think it's really important to set a schedule and stick to it, especially when you have more than one child. Um, feel free um, to email me for my Dr. P's distance learning checklist. This was something that's really I had intended for children um, who were still enrolled in school, but learning online through school. So that's more what distance learning is, but it would still apply for children who are being homeschooled. Um, many of the same principles still apply. Um, and I say set a schedule and stick to it because I think, um, it, and, and if your child can collaborate with you in making that schedule, I think they'll have some ownership of it. And um, again, if you set these benchmarks of things for your home instruction plan that you're providing to the superintendent, um, and you're at least making good faith progress towards it, I think then, you know, all will be okay. Um, you just, you know, I think it could be really easy, especially if when you've got work, when you've got other things going on to kind of fall by the wayside. And so um, I'm at most teachers, um, or I should say most good teachers, I think are real planners and are super organized. So if you are going to take on the burden of teaching your child, um, you're going to want to adopt some of that forward thinking. 
By contrast, though, don't think you need to be right next to your child, especially if they're in middle school or high school. Um, 100% of the day. Their teachers aren't with them 100% of the day. And so, nor should you be. You know, there should be time for practice of skills that you've taught. There should also be time for independent reading. There should be time for quiet reflection and downtime. Um, in one of, if later on, I'll, I'll give you instructions for my YouTube. Um, if you go on actually for <clears throat> I think it was Pearl River Public Library earlier in the spring, I did a webinar on taming anxiety for teens, but this applies to anybody. There's sort of seven different types of activities that our brains need in order to be healthy. And one of them is downtime without, you know, screens or anything like that. And so you can incorporate that into your child's homeschool day as well. And finally, you know, you, you can enlist the support of targeted professionals like me. Um, for example, if you don't know algebra or trigonometry, obviously, you know, you might want to bring somebody else in. I have a, you know, tennis player here. Maybe you're not athletic and, you know, your child needs to meet the PE requirement. Um, so don't think that you have to completely go this alone um, and know that, uh, you know, there's a reason, for example, why elementary school kids oh, go to special, right? Hi, Mr. and Ms. Carpaccio, could you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Um, thanks. Uh, and so, uh, and then there's a reason why, you know, in middle school and high school, your kids have a bunch of different teachers because no one can be good at everything. Okay. So one thing, again, as I'm kind of alluding to on the last slide, you want to really connect with others. You might want to find a mentor through one of the, the homeschooling networks I'm going to talk about. You can link up with other homeschooling groups or others who homeschool in your area. You can start a homeschooling co-op and these have become, these have gotten a lot of um, buzz lately. Um, the co-op is where like you might say, I don't know, say you're an architect and so you might be really good in math and then um, you have a friend who's the uh, editor of a local newspaper so they're really good in English language arts and you each agree to sort of like teach each other's kids um, the, the, the various subjects that you're good in. Um, that's sort of the co-op model. Um, a pod would be where similar, a bunch of kids all still together, but you might be hiring out a, a, a teacher, um, and that could be either prearranged um, by an, a, some organization, or you can, I know also um, sometimes families are setting those up themselves. There are, you know, verified organizations that are out there to help guide you more than, you know, a 30, 45 minute webinar can do, such as the National Homeschool Association. And <clears throat> there are tons of Facebook groups, as I'm sure you know. Uh, I heard one mom talking about how they're a little overwhelming. So maybe just belong to like one in your area. But then there are also really good websites like homeschoolrealm.com, rockyourhomeschool.net. Um, I'm sure you may even know of others if you've been thinking about this for a while. So, um, to learn more, I, I definitely think, you know, feel free to email me. My, my email address is info at crimsoncoaching.com. You can get my uh, distance learning checklist for um, your child or, and you. Um, I also have lots of talks upcoming in the next two months. Some are at Pearl River. They're webinars like this. 
others of them are um, at other libraries, but the libraries in Westchester have been great. They've really been, as at, just like Pearl River and Rockland, they've really been allowing people to cross register. So if you like Crimson Coaching on Facebook, you'll get news of all of these upcoming talks that are free. Um, you can also see them on the classes and workshops page of my website, which is www dot crimsoncoaching.com and then if you subscribe to my youtube channel just search crimson coaching on youtube you'll see other talks like this one for parents but in addition i have a ton of videos for students um, everything from goal setting to time management to note taking um, they're pretty short um, and if you've got kids who are older i have a whole course a 10-week um, course five minutes each video on what they should be doing each week um, for the college application process. So I'm, I'm eager to hear your questions in a moment. I just want to once again thank Emily Dowie and Pearl River Public Library for having me and hosting this talk. If you felt like you learned a little something, I would be so grateful if you could Google Crimson Coaching LLC on Google and write, scroll down to write a review and um, leave a review. So with that, I am just going to open this up to questions. You could feel free to either put it in the chat or feel free to just unmute yourself. There's only nine of us here um, and that's including Emily and me. So, you know, unmute yourself if you've got a question, okay? Does anyone have any questions or feel free to put it in the chat? No, I think we're, I think I'm good for now. This is Nicole Schuster. I'm definitely going to check out, um, I've already subscribed to um, uh, Crimson's YouTube. I found it while she was chatting. Oh, good. Um, while the doctor was chatting and I found her on LinkedIn. Um, I, I don't have any questions right now. Um, but it, it, it's definitely something that we're going to look into. Okay, great, great. Also, Nicole, um, if you can think of any more webinars that would be helpful for the library to organize, that would help. Um, that would help you, like as a parent, or figure out, like you know, the homeschooling situation or the school situation. Um, please uh, let me know. You can um, you can email me. I can put my uh, my work email in the chat. Absolutely. I think you're doing a great job um, so far. Um, oh, and, you, so uh, you know, these, the, it's exactly what we need. Um, I think there's just so much information out there and it really helps if, you know, the, the library kind of just narrows it down to just one resource <laughs> and then we can start from there. Um, you know, there are a ton of Facebook pages you can go to, but it's never one-on-one -on -one like we have the doctor here right now. Uh, we're able to ask your questions. Of course, you know, at seven o'clock, right? Seven thirty. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> no one's no one's brain is quite functioning at this hour. It's okay. It's all so right. I'm just gonna sleep on it. I'm definitely gonna email both of you guys um, tomorrow morning when I'm nice and fresh and not with a nine month old suffocating me on oh, my yeah. chest here. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. You and, and anybody else, if you like think of a, you know, a question while you're in the shower tomorrow morning or whatever it is, feel free. But, I'm, I'm happy. Also, you know, um, I feel like this, this, um, the, the uh, title of this event, homeschooling, it scared away people that aren't sure what they're going to do yet. Um, but okay. I agree, you know, anybody who is, potentially going to have somebody that's social distance, uh, social learning, I'm sorry, distance learning. You see what I mean? My brain is shot. Uh, <laughs> distance learning. It's very similar to homeschooling. Um, you know, we don't have to submit all these reports or quarterly reports to superintendent or, you know, the um, department of, of um, education, but it's still, you know, the organization and, and um, resources, it's all the same. And I think a lot more people would be interested in, learning about this if, if um, you know, maybe homeschooling slash social learning, I'm 
distance learning. Virtual learning. And yeah, learning. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, you know, well, I feel bad that people were scared away, um, but I'm. But this is being recorded, and so I'm going to put it up on the YouTube on the library's YouTube channel. Perfect. So That's if what you I can figured. tell I people that, that it would friends. be very. Oh, thank you. Um, so you can tell people that you know they're they you know they feel free for them to watch it, and that you know it's just an info session. Right. 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 Um, and you know it's it's very basic info, simple, exactly what I needed to hear. Um, you know, I'm it wasn't so overload. Uh, so I, you know, I'm happy that I, I've got this YouTube channel. I'm going to flip through it. Um, I also have teenager, uh, nephews and nieces that are going to find this very helpful as well. Um, in addition to my second grader. So, oh, um, that's great. I really appreciate it. Thank you. That that's great to know. And, um, you know, if you feel like other people, who say, no, no, there's no way I'm ever going to homeschool. My kid is going to go back, whether it's in person or um, distance learning. I'm also, um, I'm, I'm teaching a class. It's three different nights, three different Wednesdays. I think it's uh, September 9th, September 16th, September 23rd. And it's mm -hmm really geared for like middle and high school students but it's really ha succeeding as a distance learner so oh, that's i will definitely share that yeah so it's it's like i used to teach this course it was called time management and study skills but we kind of you held that at the library once correct i i, did. I yeah. missed it yeah i missed that one I did, and now it's it's those same kind of skills, but adapted for the online environment because you know you arguably kids need even more time management skills when right. they're in a distance learning environment and when they're in front of their computer all day, or worse yet, if they never interact with their teachers face to face and they right. just get emailed oh here's this assignment it's due on this date and then they have to kind of figure out how to do it so the time management piece becomes really important in the district right process. and that's actually um what the case is for the lower the uh i i know for uh, a fact for you know grades k through um four um they there's no timeline for us um, you just kind of like get it in. <laughs> so you make your own timeline. And for me, you know, being really busy, uh, I have my own work schedule to manage. I end up getting it in on Friday or Sunday night, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, it's just, it, it's different for everybody, but I'm, you know, everything you've shared is very helpful. And, um, I, I did like the point that you made that these kids need downtime. They need time off the screen, um, you know, in order to balance that healthy mindset. Uh, just too much screen time is is just it's it's not gonna work out well in the end yeah and you know now i think we need to be more mindful of it than ever because you know <clears throat> we all have to be on screens in order to do our schooling or work and right. so our now free time you know whereas before if we were doing our schooling or work in person you know we could play, you know, Xbox or Roblox. Right, our free or, time would be the screen time. <laughs> right, exactly. But now I think it's really important. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny because even <clears throat> kids who, you know, really like school and are good at it. You know, I have a, a niece who just finished second grade and um, I was doing, I actually have this up on my website. Um, it's under the resources section. If you want to check it out, it's actually a multidisciplinary unit um, combining science, math, and um, writing. And um, we were outside because it was the beginning of the pandemic and um we got into on our walk home um the, about the effects of of too much um, my niece loves roblox um about too much um you know video game playing on the brain and um you know i said well you know there are studies that show and she said they didn't study my brain no they didn't study my brain and she was really like doubling down on the fact that it sounds like my daughter that's how she <laughs> yes that's her. And she loves Roblox too. 
Yeah, um, and I mean, she's, my niece is a great kid and she's very smart, but I think, you know, the more we're just intentional about, yeah, you know, this isn't, this isn't good for you. Just like the same way we would tell them, you know, that um, eating a bag of Doritos isn't good for them, right? You know? Um, right. Yeah. Anybody else come up with any questions? Yes, I actually, hi, sorry, this is Rachel. I just sent one to the chat. Sorry, I'm trying to drive, but I was trying oh. to make sure I could get my question in. Oh. Uh, I kind of signed in late. I'm sorry, because I just got out of work. But um, okay. I just wanted to, I didn't hear the beginning, I, you know, so I will look forward to seeing it on the YouTube video, I mean, YouTube channel later um, through, the, through the library. But I just had some other kind of random questions. Um, so right now we did, you register for our daughter to do the the complete remote option through the school through Pearl River um, but my you know do you have tips on let's say you know we're gonna try this out and see if this can work you know my husband and I were both in healthcare, so I really don't know if we're gonna even make this happen yeah. um, and so I you know I didn't know if you know there's good tips or resources like let's say if we did you know we're going through the school but then let's say we realize a few weeks in, this is not gonna work for her or us. Um, you know, can we then just transition to us doing the homeschooling ourselves? You, you can, you, you might've missed this slide. You just need to provide um, 14 days before you uh, take your daughter out of school okay. um, that you're going to do that. And then- yeah and then you need to and the the t exact timing on when you need to get the home instruction plan i'm not exactly certain but if you go back and watch i have um a, a website at the bottom and the slide is called new york state's requirements right okay um, and you can go on that website and that'll kind of give you but the big one is you have to notify the the district uh, at least days before provide a home instruction plan, give quarterly reports, and an end of year assessment. And what exactly would those quarterly reports like entail? You're, again, they're, they're, I'm sure they have like, you know, more sort of uh, bu bullets and things like that. Uh, okay. You're basically, the quarterly reports will basically be demonstrating what your child has learned. So okay. just like, okay. Just like teachers need to, you know, we set up a plan and it's called a lesson plan. And right. we say in our lesson plan, um, by the end of this lesson, the student will be able to say, you know, count to five um, on her own backwards and forwards. Like maybe it's, uh, you know, okay. maybe it's kindergarten or something. And then okay. you find a way of assessing whether the child actually uh, mastered what you said they were going that, to do in the plan. Right? Okay. So right. This, okay. This is on a much longer, you know, you won't have to do that for every lesson, but you say at the end of a quarter, you say, you know, I want my child to learn, you know, the capital of all 50 states. And maybe you show that by a, a test that you give them. Showing right. Them okay. The state I see. Learn. Yeah. And those are quarterly reports. Okay, yeah, I just, um, no, this was a great resource. And I had, you know, I had signed up through the Pearl River. Um, and, you know, I'm sorry that I missed the beginning of it. Um, but, um, yeah, I guess that was, I guess, something that I was thinking if, you know, we try this complete distant option. But, again, and I don't know, I don't even know if Pearl River really told us exactly how that curriculum is going to work. I just saw that Wednesdays are going to be the days that they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know as far as the schedule, what that's going to be. Right. Um, the other thing, just FYI, um, in case you do decide, any anybody out there decide to do it, for the end of year assessment, um, it's a more lengthy form, but they will actually um, substitute, um, there, there's a test, you, you may have heard it for, for, um, for kids called the California Assessment. And, or the cat. Uh, and so kids can actually take the cat for their grade level. And if they get above a certain score on that, they mm -hmm. can, you, you wouldn't have to write the end of year assessment. In many oh, I see. Yeah, actually, that, that was my other question was like, how would we like, yeah, show 
like if let's say we were able to successfully um, homeschool her, that she's, you know, completed whatever requirements, you know, for kindergarten in order to enter first grade? Or is that like a school district like specific thing? Well, you know, I actually think, and, and, and I'll admit, I'm not a homeschooling expert and I'm not an educational policy expert, but I actually don't think kindergarten is mandated, which is why um, in the earlier slide I had showed, uh, for instance, for grades one through six, mm -hmm. students need to be in, in school, whatever that is, you know, if it's at home, they need to be 900 hours. Right, okay. Lesson. Um, there wasn't anything for kindergarten. So I think right. in kindergarten, you have a lot more flexibility. Um, okay. But it, by first grade, then that's mandated. It's got to be 900 hours. Yes, I remember I did do some research looking up exactly at how to homeschool based on New York State's, you know, rules or, you know, protocols. Um, but yes, I did remember not really seeing anything specifically um, for kindergarten, like you said. But yes, I remember seeing something about 900 hours. But I, yeah, that was for like the higher grades. Right, grades one through six and then 990 for seven through 12. Ah, uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I guess I'm I feel lucky then that it's just kindergarten. Um, but <laughs> yeah, um, and hopefully by the time your daughter's in first, this will all be over. Oh gosh, yes, I hope so. I hope so. But thank you so much for taking my question. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the but other. Not um, at all. People. <laughs> not at all. Any other people have questions out there? Actually, sorry, I do have one more other question. So as far as like, like you said, once, as far as like the curriculum, let's say we end up wanting to homeschool her, you know, we, we give the notice to the superintendent. And then as far as the curriculum itself, so let's say if we wanted to use an online site, mm -hmm. um, like time for learning or something is one of what was someone suggested to us, you know, if they, are, if they provide a curriculum, is that something that then I can just share with the superintendent or, you know, with the school district saying, this is what we're gonna follow? Yeah, but I, you probably, so the, the, there's a difference between uh, sort of a curriculum and a plan. The plan is much more sort of schematic and it will be like, these are the goals that my child is going to, uh, that we're going to shoot for. Okay. And the curriculum is sort of how you're going to get there. I you, see. Yeah, so you may need to provide a little bit about the curriculum in the plan, but the plan is much more about um, the goals and also how you're going to assess whether she met those goals or not. I see. Does okay. that make sense? And so the yeah, that makes sense. The curriculum is the piece in the middle, and you're going to outline that, but it's not like uh, you're not going to get that into depth in that. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was the one thing that yeah I, I wanted to ask because I did like I like I did look into it a little bit, but I wasn't sure exactly yeah, what I would have to present to show them, um, you know, for the you know like you said plan versus the curriculum itself. Right. Right. So to add on to Rachel, this is Nicole again. Um, so if we do go with one of those, you know, learning um, companies, then the correct question to ask or the best question to ask is, will you help me come up with a plan to present to the superintendent? Me? Right. Right. Like, oh, if, oh. yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it, with, with any company like yours, right? Like yours or um, what is the uh, Rachel, what, what, um, it was, did you it make? was like time for learning. It was like a time for learning.com. I think it was, it was basically, yeah, like another right. kind of online site that will provide like, you know, yeah, basically the curriculum, but you know, the, mm -hmm. then we can ask them, then we would say, uh, so would you guys be able to help me put together a plan? Um, you know, it's great that you have the curriculum, but the, the plan is something that the superintendent needs from us. Um, mm -hmm. that is if you go with them. Right, and um, that you're legally obligated to, to provide if you right. take right, your child to homeschool. Right. I think that is that is a great question to ask. I didn't realize the difference between the two, the plan and the curriculum. I hear curriculum, and I think that is that is the plan. It's just another right, word for that plan. Same. That's what I, that's what I was good that she clarified that, because I, I thought that was the same thing. Right. Also. That is a very good question, Rachel. 
Yeah. So yeah. The, the curriculum would be more, and, and this is like, I'm, sh you know, I'm sure they have a lot more in there, but it would be like the actual stuff that your kid is getting, whether it's handouts or, you know, little things she needs to fill in. Right. The, the plan is more sort of for the adult who's guiding this. Got it. Yeah, Got like it. you said, like the goals, basically, like she will accomplish, you know, learning all the uppercase, lowercase, or being able to read sight words or something like that, right? And do, exactly. is that, is that, yeah. Okay. As well as the assessment, and I am going to assess whether she knows those things with a task, the, uh, with a verbal, you know, a right. song or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and, and that, you know, that's a good question um, for these companies. Again, um, you know, I'm not a homeschooling expert, but um, I would say for sure that would be something that you could and should ask them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just because I totally understand the whole, like, you know, sending a letter of intent, making sure you reach within that time frame. I guess my thing that I haven't been able to wrap my mind around yet is, um, yeah, how do we, or what would, what would we need to provide, you know, as far as, like you said, like the curriculum slash plan, you know, but now I, now I, now it, it seems a little clearer, but it just, yeah. I mean, um, okay. And I Thank think you. going, going on that website, um, that's on the, the slide, New York state requirement, um, mm -hmm that's going to be really helpful too because mm -hmm. that's going to it's kind of like the place where you need to go to figure out whether you're in compliance with the state law um so that's right. going to be resources there for you too of this is what it needs to look like right right okay. and now that i think of it um my kid i have my two younger kids go to kinder care daycare but my um the preschool and pre-k and transitional kindergarten they provide every quarter to us um, the plan with the breakdown of the curriculum and his assessments and where he stands each quarter. You know, like now he's able to write his name, recite his home address and all that stuff. So now I think I actually know what I'm looking for um, in terms of, you know, providing something to the superintendent. But I'm pretty sure they have like samples, sample resources on the New York State site, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, for me, I don't think I made it that far into, you know, my research, um, but um, all right, great. Thank you. That was very helpful. You're, you're welcome. That's okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments they'd like to share? All right. Well, if that is about it it's almost eight o'clock so i am i always try to keep these under an hour because i know how tiring it probably is for everybody who's got <laughs> home. uh so i just want to thank um emily dowie and the pearl river, river library and all of you again for showing up and um again feel free to email me tomorrow or whenever if you've got any questions i'll i'll be happy to help you to the best of my ability thanks so much mm -hmm.